Busy today? Busy? Aye. The fire in the Beecham last night has given me work enough. A dozen poor prisoners, Richard Colfax, Sir Martin Byfleet, Colonel Fairfax, war in the preacher poet, and, uh, uh, and half a score others, all packed into one small cell, not six feet square. And poor Colonel Fairfax, who's to die today, is to be removed to number 14 in the cold harbor, that he may have his last hour alone with his confessor, oh, and I've to see to that. Poor gentleman, he'll die bravely. I fought under him two years since, and he valued his life as if it were a feather. I so. He's the bravest, the handsomest, and the best young gentleman in England. He twice saved my father's life. And it's a cruel thing, a wicked thing, and a barbarous thing that so gallant a hero should lose its head. For it's the handsomest head in England. For dealings with the devil. Aye, if all were beheaded who dealt with him, there'd be busy doings on Tower Green. You know very well that Colonel Fairfax is a student of alchemy. Nothing more and nothing less. But this wicked tower, like a cruel giant in a fairy tale, must be fed with blood. And that blood must be the best and bravest in England, or it's not good enough for the old blunderbore. Oh. Silence! You silly girl. You know not what you say. I was born in the old keep, 
and I've grown gray in it. And please God, I shall die and be buried in it. And there's not a stone in its walls that is not as dear to me as my own right hand. <laughs> But there's one hope yet. 
Thy brother Leonard, who as a reward for his valor and saving his standard and cutting his way through fifty foes who would have hanged him, has been appointed a yeoman of the guard, will arrive today, and as he comes straight from Windsor, where the court is, it, it may be, it may be that he will bring the expected reprieve with him. Oh, that he may! Amen to that, for the colonel twice saved my life, and I'd give the rest of my life to save his. He will not be glad to welcome thy brave brother with the fame of whose exploits all England is a ring. Aye, truly, if he brings the reprieve. And not otherwise. Well, he's a brave fellow indeed. And I love brave men. All brave men? Most of them, I verily believe. But I hope Leonard will not be too strict with me. They say he is a very dragon of virtue and circumspection. <laughs> now, my dear old father, is kindness is and leaves thee pretty well to thine own ways, eh? Well, I've no fears for thee. Thou hast a feather brain, but thou art a good lass. Yes, that's all very well. But if Leonard is going to tell me that I may not do this and I may not do that, and I must not talk to this one or walk with that one, but <laughs> go through life with my lips pursed up and my eyes cast down like a poor nun who has renounced mankind. Why, as I have not renounced mankind, and don't mean to renounce mankind, I won't have it. There. <laughs> no, he'll, he'll not treat the uh, Phoebe. Uh, he's a brave fellow, and uh, uh, it seems but yesterday that he robbed the lieutenant's orchard. Father! Leonard, my <laughs> brave boy, I, I'm right glad to see thee, and so, so is Phoebe. Hi. Hast thou brought Colonel Fairfax's reprieve? Nay. I have here a dispatch for the lieutenant, but no reprieve for the colonel. Poor gentleman, poor gentleman. Aye, I would I had brought better news. I'd give my right hand, nay, my body, my life to save his. Dost thou speak in earnest, my lad? Aye, father, I'm no braggart. Did he not save thy life, and am I not his foster brother? Then hearken to me, thou, thou hast come to join the yeoman of the guard. Uh, well? None has seen thee but ourselves. And the sentry, who took but scant notice of me. Now, to prove thy words, give me the dispatch, and get thee hence at once. Here is money, and I'll send thee more. Lie hidden for a space, and let no one know. I'll convey a suit of yeoman's uniform to the colonel's cell. He shall shave off his beard, so that none shall know him. And I'll own him as my son, the brave Leonard Barrow, who <laughs> saved his flag and cut his way through fifty foes who thirsted for his life. He will be welcomed without question by my fellow yeoman, I'll warrant that. Now, how to get access to the Colonel's cell? The key is with thy sour-faced admirer, <laughs> Wilfred Shadbolt. I think, I say, I think I may get anything I want from Wilfred. <laughs> I think, mind, I say, I think you may leave that to me. <laughs> Get thee hence at once, lad, and bless thee for this sacrifice. And take my blessing too, dear, dear Leonard. And thine, eh? <laughs> Thy love is newborn. Wrap it up carefully, lest it take cold and die. <laughs> Alas, I waver to and fro. Dark danger hangs upon the deed. Dark danger hangs upon the deed. The stream is rash and bed may fail, but toss her not the harbor to quail. The hands that shrink, the cheeks that pale in hours of need. No hours are not the hearts that fail. The hands that shrink, the cheeks that pale, the hands that shrink. I count it not. That life is his, so count it not. And shall I reckon risks I run when services are to be done to save a life of such an one? Unworthy thought, unworthy thought. And shall we reckon risks? To save the life of such an one, unworthy thought, unworthy thought. 
may succeed. Who can foretell? May heaven help our home. the humour of it. Hey, and if I do, hang me. Thou dost not. Now observe, she said, hands off. Whose hands? Thine. Off whom? Off her. Why? Because she is a woman. Now, has she not been a woman? Thine hands had not been set upon her at all. So the very reason for the laying on of hands is the reason for the taking off of hands. And herein is contradiction contradicted. <laughs> it is the very marriage of pro with con, and no such lopsided union either as times go. For pro is not more unlike con than man is unlike woman. <laughs> Yet men and women marry every day, with none to say, oh, the pity of it. But I, and fools like me. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, wherewithal shall we please you? We can rhyme you, couplet, trial, and quatrain, rondelet, sonnet, ballad, what you will. Or we can dance you! <laughs> rondelet, carole, pimpanel, or jumping down! <laughs> Let us give then the singing farce of the merry man and his maid. They're in his song and dance too. Boys, the very man in his song. <laughs> I have a song to sing. Oh, sing me a song. Oh. It is sung to the moon by a lovely horn moon who fled from the parting throng. It's the song of the merry man in Boeing, mum, whose soul was sad and whose glance was glum. Who sipped no sup and who craved no crumb as he sighed for the love of a lady. Hey, hey, is any beer like a dainty? He sipped no sup and he craved no crumb as he sighed for the love of a lady.
deserted Reginald and sworn allegiance to his rival. And all forsooth, because he has glanced with passing favor on a puling milkmaid. <laughs> Fools, of this fancy he will soon weary, and then I, I who alone am faithful to him, shall reap my reward. But do not dally too long, Reginald, for my charms, they are ripe, Reginald. <laughs> and already they are decaying. <laughs> Better secure me ere I have gone too far. Impatiently begins 
and plant, we then should to expect that what we recollect, though but a part of true high heart, will have its due effect. Exactly right, we hope you won't upgrade. You can't get high aesthetic taste like trousers ready made. True views are never the evil some time alone will bring. But as far as we can judge, it's something like this sort of thing. You told yourself like this, you hold yourself. Like that. By hook and crook, you try to look for them, you look and flat. To cultivate the trim, rigidity of limb. You ought to get a marionette and form your style on him. <laughs> Yes, it's quite clear that our only chance of making a lasting impression on these young ladies is to become as aesthetic as they are. No doubt. The only question is how far we've succeeded in doing so. <laughs> I don't know why, but I have a feeling this is not quite right. <laughs> I don't like it. I never did. I don't see what it means. I do it, but I don't like it. My good friend, the question is not whether we like it, but whether they do. They understand these things. We don't. Now, I shouldn't be surprised if this is effective enough uh, at a distance. I can't help thinking we're a little stiff at it. It would be extremely awkward if we were to be struck so. I don't think we should be struck so. Perhaps we're a little awkward at first, but everything must have a beginning. Here they come. Attention! Oh, Sapphire, see, see. The immortal fire has descended on them. They are of the inner brotherhood. Perceptibly intense, inconsummately utter. How Botticellian! How Fra Angelican! Oh, art! We thank thee for this, Boone. I'm afraid we're not quite right. Not supremely, perhaps, but oh so all but. <laughs> oh, Sapphire, are they not quite too all but? They are, indeed, jolly utter. I wonder what the inner brotherhood usually recommend for cramp. Oh. Ladies, we will not deceive you. We are doing this at some personal inconvenience <laughs> with a view of expressing the extremity of our devotion to you. We trust that it is not without its effect. We will not deny that we are much moved by this proof of your attachment. Yes, your conversion to the principles of aesthetic art in its highest development has touched us deeply. And if Mr. Grosvenor should remain obdurate, as we have every reason to believe he will, I wish they'd make haste. We are not prepared to say that our yearning hearts will not go out to you. By sections of threes, rapture! Oh. <laughs> oh, it's extremely good for beginners. It's admirable. The only question is who will take who? Oh. The Duke chooses first, as a matter of course. Oh, I couldn't think of it. You are really too good. Nothing of the kind. You are a great matrimonial fish, and it's only fair that each of these ladies should have a chance of hooking you. It's perfectly simple. 
Uh, 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 suppose you take Angela, I take Sophia, Major takes nobody. Suppose you take Sophia, Major takes Angela, I take nobody. Suppose you choose neither, I take Angela, Major takes Sophia. Clear as day. <laughs> If Sophia I choose to marry, I shall be fixed up for life. Then the colonel need not tarry, Angela can be his wife. In that case, unprecedented single, I shall live and die. I shall have to be contented with the heart that's in the time. To be contented with the heart that's in the time. In that case, some resident and single, I will live in time. I will have to be contented with the heart that's in the life. I will have to be contented with the heart that's in the life. I will have to be contented with the heart that's in the life. If on Angie I determine at my wedding she'll appear, that in diamond. In that case, unsubstantiated seeing the lie shall live and die. I shall have to be contented with a heart that sympathizes. We will have to be contented with a heart that sympathizes. In that case, unsubstantiated seeing the lie will live and die. I will have to be contented with a heart that sympathizes. We will have to be contented with a heart that sympathizes. Some debate internal, if for neither I decide. Sophia now may take the colonel and she be the major's bride. In that case, unprecedented single, I shall live and die. I shall have to be contented with their heartfelt sympathy. We will have to be contented with their heartfelt sympathy. In the case of precedent and single, he will live and die. He will have to be contented with the heart that sympathizes. He will have to be contented with the heart that sympathizes. He will have to be contented with the heart that I am the lowliest star that sails the water, and you, proud maiden, are my captain's daughter. Proud lady, have your way. You speak, and I obey. My heart, she that's so sworn,
darkest doubts have been. But though the sky is now serene, a frowning thunderbolt above me, and their ill assorted love, which now is all ablaze. Our captain ever day is not to be extremely down upon the wicked men who are to ploy to make his dose of feed less coy in many various ways. Oh, joy, your rapture, none for sleep, for now the sky is all serving. My God, the day the orb of light has hung his ensign high above the sun.
may be. Who is poor little Buttercup that she should expect his glance to fall on one so lowly? And yet, if he knew, if he only knew. Ah, little Buttercup, still on board. That is not quite right, little one. It would have been more respectable to have gone on shore at dusk. True, dear captain, but the recollection of your sad, pale face seemed to chain me to the ship. <laughs> I would fain see you smile before I go. Ah, little buttercup, I fear it will be long before I recover my accustomed cheerfulness, for misfortunes crowd upon me, and all my old friends seem to have turned against me. Oh, no. Do not say all, dear captain. That were unjust to one, at least. True, for you are staunch to me. <laughs> if ever I gave my heart again, methinks it would be to such a one as this. <laughs> I am touched to the heart by your innocent regard for me, and were we differently situated, I think I could have returned it. But as it is, I fear I can never be more to you than a friend. I understand. You will hold aloof from me because you are rich and lofty, and I poor and lowly. <coughs> but take care. The poor bumboat woman has gypsy blood in her veins and can read destinies. Destinies? There is a change in store for you. <laughs> a change? I. Be prepared. Things are seldom what they seem. Skim milk masquerades as cream. High lords pass as patent leathers. Jackdaws strut in peacock's feathers. Very true, so they do. Black sheep dwell in every fold. All that glitters is not gold. Storks turn out to be but logs. Bulls are but inflated frogs. So they be frequently. Drops the wind and storms the mill. Turbot is a vicious thrill. Kills the farthing if you will. Yet it is a farthing still. Yes, I know. That is so, though to catch your drift, I'm striving. It is shame, it is shame. I don't see at what you're driving, Mystic Lady, Mystic Lady. Stern convictions for me stealing, that the Mystic Lady is stealing, in a vacuum of feeling. Yes, I know. That is so. <laughs> Though I'm anything but clever, I could talk like that forever. Once a cat was killed by care, only brave deserve the fair. Very true, so they do. Wink is often good as mud, spoils the child who spares the rod. Thirsty lambs run foxy dangers. Dogs are found in many mangers. Frequently, I agree. Paw of cat the chestnut snatches. Worn out garlands show new patches. Only count the chick that hatches. Men are grown up catchy catchies. Yes, I know that is so. Though to catch my drift he is striving, I'll dissemble, I'll dissemble. When he sees at what I'm driving, let him tremble, let him tremble. Though the mystic tone you borrow, I shall learn the truth with sorrow, here today and gone tomorrow. Yes, I know. That is so. 
as her utterances are, I nevertheless feel that they are dictated by a sincere regard for me. <laughs> but to what new misery is she referring? Time alone can tell. <laughs> Captain Corporal, I am much disappointed with your daughter. In fact, I don't think she will do. She won't do, Sir Joseph? I'm afraid not. The fact is that although I have urged my suit with as much elegance as is consistent with an official utterance, I have done so hitherto without success. How do you account for this? Really, Sir Joseph, I hardly know. Josephine is, of course, sensible of your condescension. She naturally would be. Uh, uh, but uh, perhaps your exalted rank dazzles her. Do you think it does? <laughs> well, I can hardly say, but she is a modest girl, and her social position is far below your own. It may be that she feels she is not worthy of you. That is really a very sensible suggestion, <laughs> and reveals more knowledge of human nature than I had given you credit for. Uh, see, she comes. If your lordship would kindly reason with her and assure her officially that it is a standing rule at the Admiralty that love levels all ranks, her respect for an official utterance might induce her to look upon your offer in its proper light. It is not unlikely. <laughs> I would adopt your suggestion, but sort. She is here. Let us withdraw and watch our opportunity. Luxurious home, hung with ancestral armor and old brasses, carved oak and tapestry from distant Rome, there grew in my Phoenician finger glasses, which oriental rugs, luxurious silken laces, and everything that isn't old from Macy. A dark and dingy room in some back street with stuffy children crying. Where organs yell and clacking housewives fume and clothes are hanging out all day and drying. With one cracked looking glass to see your face in and dinner served up in a pudding basin.
madam, it has been represented to me that you are appalled by my exalted rank. I desire to convey to you officially uh, my assurance that if your hesitation is attributable to that circumstance, it is uncalled for. Oh, then your lordship is of the opinion that married happiness is not inconsistent with discrepancy in rank? I am uh, officially of that opinion. That the high and the lowly may be truly happy together, provided that they truly love one another. Madam, I desire to convey to you officially my opinion that love is a platform upon which all ranks meet. My thank you, Sir Joseph! Oh, I did hesitate, but I shall hesitate no longer. He little thinks how eloquently he has pleaded his rival's cause. <laughs> Never mind the why and wherefore love can wear the ranks and therefore though his lordship stations mighty, though stupendous be his brain, though her tastes are mean and flighty, and her fortune poor and plain. Ring the merry bells of lordship, rend the air with warping wild, for the union of his lordship with a humble captain's child. For a humble captain's daughter. For a gallant captain's daughter. And the lord who rules the water. And a tart without the water. Let the air with joy be laden, friend with something yet above, for the union of a maiden with a man who wants her love. Never mind the why and wherefore love can level ranks, and therefore, though you're not a co relation, in my set could scarcely pass, though you occupy a station in the lower middle class. Ring the merry bells of lordship, ready the air with walking wild, for the union of his lordship with the humble captain's child. For a humble captain's daughter. For a gallant captain's daughter. And the lord who rules the water. And a tart without the water. Let the air with joy be laid and ring the something air above, for the union of a maiden with the man who holds her love. You have carried conviction to my hesitating heart. Ring the merry bells of lordship, ready the air with walking wild, for the union of his lordship with a humble captain's child. For a humble captain's daughter. For a gallant captain's daughter. Water! And a tar who tells me not. Let the air with joy be laden. Ring the merry bells of lordship. For the union of a maiden. For her union with his lordship. Ring the something and a ball. For the man who wants her love. Ring the something and a ball. For the man who wants her
pirate's lair. Joy and bondage, oh sweet relief, oh rapture and example. At last there may atone in some slight measure for the repeated acts of theft and pillage, of which at a sense of duty stern dictation. I, circumstances victim, have been guilty. Dom Frederick, who calls your late commander. And Roy, your little proofs. Oh, mad intruders, how dare ye face me? Know ye not, O rash ones, that I have doomed you to extermination? Have mercy on us. Hear us ere you slaughter. I do not think I ought to listen to you. Yet mercy should alloy our stern resentment. And so I will be merciful. Say on. <laughs> <laughs> The ways of paradox at common sense she gaily mocks. Though counting in the usual way, years 21, I've been alive. Yet reckoning by my natal day, yet reckoning by my natal day, one, two, three, four. I am a little boy of five. He's a little boy of five. <laughs> a paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox. <laughs> a paradox, <laughs> a curious paradox. <laughs> a most ingenious paradox. Ha, 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 ha. 
my word. How curious. How most absurdly whimsical. Five and a quarter. No one would know it to look at me. <laughs> <laughs> My comrades? I'm afraid you don't appreciate the delicacy of your position. You were apprentice to us. Until I reached my 21st year. No, until you reach your 21st birthday. And going by birthdays, you were as yet only five and a quarter. <laughs> don't say you're going to hold me to that. Oh, no! We merely remind you of the fact and leave the rest to your sense of duty. Your sense of duty! Don't put it on that footing. As I have been merciful to you just now, be merciful to me. I implore you not to insist on the letter of your bond, just as the cup of happiness is at my lips. We insist on nothing. We content ourselves with pointing out to you your duty. Your duty. Well, you have appealed to my sense of duty, and my duty is only too clear. Oh, I abhor your infamous calling. I shudder at the thought of ever having been caught up with it. But, um, duty is above all. At any price, I will do my duty. Bravely spoken! <laughs> Come, you are one of us once more. Lead on, I follow. Oh, but horror! What, what is, is the matter? matter? Ought I to tell you? No, no, I cannot do it. And yet, as a member of your band... To speak out! I charge you with that sense of conscientiousness to which we have never yet appealed in vain. Uh, uh, General Stanley. Yes. The father of my Mabel. Yes, yes, yes. He escaped from you on the plea that he was an orphan? <gasps> he did? Oh, it breaks my heart to betray the honored father of the girl I adore. And yet, as your apprentice, I have no alternative. <clears throat> It is my duty. Yes. To tell you. Yes, yes. That General Stanley. Yes, yes, yes. Is no orphan. What? More than that, he never was one. to understand that to spare his contemptible life, he dared practise on our credulous simplicity? Mm -hmm. Our revenge will be swift and terrible! We will go and collect our band and attack Trey Morden Castle this very night! Oh, but stay! Not a word! He is doomed! Away, away, my heart's on fire. I burn this base deception to repay. This very noise, my vengeance fire. Shall collapse its sand and go away, away. Away, away, ere I expire. I find my duty hard to do today. My heart is filled with anguish dire. It strikes me to the corner, away, away. With vengeance foul, he tricked us of our prize. With vengeance foul, the pirate's foe decides. On need to stern, he's open with his lies. And in return tonight, the traitor dies. Yes, yes, tonight the traitor dies. Yes, yes, tonight the traitor dies. Tonight he dies. This or early tomorrow. His girls likewise. They will not have been sworn. The ones of spot 
And all who plot that two of you shall perish. Tonight he dies in front of me tomorrow. His curse, like once they were butter and sorrow. Oh, one who's so smart and then they just went cherish. And all who plot to him, this it shall perish. Away, away, away. Tonight the traitor dies. Away, away, tonight, tonight, tonight. The traitor dies tonight. Oh!